Hey guys, good morning. Vending tips number two. These uh, are our series of videos. I keep them about 10 minutes to keep your interest that are going to come out every Wednesday. And uh, what I do normally when I start in the morning, and I start early, is I go through the Facebook posts of our groups, which I'm an admin in a few of them, as probably many of you know. And uh, first one I came across was really a positive one. This was a, a beginning operator, I believe, that were already in business, and they said they finally landed a plant. Now, I imagine what they mean is some sort of a manufacturing plant. Uh, this location, they did not state how many employees. I hope it's over 75, 100, because they, they said that four machines were needed. Um, most plants, if not all, are blue collar. Blue collar are going to outsell the white collar spots at least two to one. People, if you're going after these office buildings, those are losers. People go out to lunch, they bring lunch. The only real office type settings that are a gold mine are the phone banks. I've had a couple phone banks in my career. I had one that had 300 employees. To be honest with you, a guy that had a modest lifestyle could live on that one spot. 300 employees in a phone bank had to be serviced every other day. It was as good as a school because those people sit at their desks and they munch between calls. They chit chat with the guy next to them. So they're good spots, good coffee spots. Um, if you have coffee, coffee service in them or if you have coin operated coffee. So anyways, uh, this one vendor said yes, they landed their first spot. They were interested in what machines they wanted. I think they were replacing a vendor that had four machines. Well, what I would recommend is let's just say there's at least 75 people and that's that's a starting point guys if it's 50 or less you know, don't even take it it's not worth the money especially for the investment of four machines but let's say it has a hundred people two soda machines one would be a glass front that has your what we call your foo-foo drinks your Starbucks three dollar coffee drinks all your various and in sundry energy drinks that are two fifty three dollars your Gatorades because for the most part let's just use the BevMax series the BevMax threes fours and sixes they only hold depending on the size of the bottle about 10 to 12 deep so if you put say 10 or 12 of those glass bottled Starbucks and it sells out that week or maybe if you service it twice a week put a second column in but these machines are not high volume machines and by that what I mean is you need 48 cans of Pepsi and 48 cans of Coke depending on the spot Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew and if it's predominantly a lot of ladies they probably drink a lot of diet drinks you may want to put a second uh, column of diet drinks in there so anyways soda machines I would put a stack type they hold Let's just use the example 501 for the Dixie Narco series, the 501E. The E stands for extended cabinet. You can put double deep bottles in. You don't make as much money. Um, I'm still a can advocate. You make twice the money you make selling a bottle. Um, but in any case, let's say you put a stack soda machine with nine or ten columns. You load it up with Coke, with Pepsi, with Dr. Pepper, with Mountain Dew. Those are probably your four biggest ones. And then next to it, you have your glass front with all your different, you can have 40 different flavors. Unless you have the skinny version, then you can have, you know, two-thirds of that. Obviously, you're going to want a good glass front snack, something that is uh, obviously modern, that has ADA compliance, in other words, Keypad 48 inches, delivery bin not more than 15 or 15 inches off the ground so people that are handicapped can access these machines. Drop sensors in this day and age, I think it's gotten to the fact where it's an absolute must. You cannot put a snack machine out there with drop sensors. A veteran that knows how to load a snack machine, no problem. 
it's the misloading of the products, usually the bagged items in the single coils, that creates the problem. Um, this operator in the Facebook post did not say what the fourth machine was. I sort of hope it wasn't a carousel type or a cold food machine. Cold food machines are dead losers. The big companies use them to get into the good spots. If you have to sell food, you have to sell microwavable burritos, etc., try and use a frozen machine. You don't throw away nearly the product. Um, ice cream machines are good. They require a lot of service. Coin-operated coffee machines are good. Once again, not so much for a beginning operator. They take a lot of service. You can't just run in a spot, dump three or four cases of soda and, and a few Doritos and Snickers and run back out. You need to spend time with that coffee machine. You need to run it through its uh, service courses. You need to wipe it down on the inside and the outside. Um, they make a mess. It's hard to pour product in those hoppers without spilling a little bit. And if you never clean it, guess what? It's going to look like a hantavirus pit in the course of a year or two, which is a health concern. So anyways, very positive news that somebody actually got a plant. Um, so then moving on to the posts, I see, I see the posts that I see just all day long. Is it worth it? What is it? Should I buy it for 300? I see so many of these. I really, I can't spend the time answering these posts anymore. It just, it's, it's, I want to scream sometimes. So anyway, somebody posts a picture of a USI 3015 snack machine. Now, not a 3015A. I can tell by the fronts of these which ones are which. This was a 3015 built in the 80s. They had plug-in shelves before they had the uh, harness type or umbilical cord shelves. The early ones had the four button control boards completely unavailable. We have not had a used one in at least five years. I don't think anybody repairs them. USI has what we call secret chips. You cannot find these chips. It's their own numbers. Everything's obsolete. So their first question is this machine, and don't quote me on the price, I think it was I think it was three or five hundred dollars. It's not worth anything. If somebody paid you three hundred to come pick it up, it still wouldn't be worth it. Um, those plug-in shelves and they're metal, not plastic, um, they just didn't work out when they were new. So their first question is, can I add credit cards to it? Is it upgradable? Is it MDB? Of course not. It's, it's built in the 80s. MDB did not come out till almost the year 2000, uh, late 90s. So if you're going to buy an upgrade kit, and they do sell them, now you have to buy a coin mech. That's, it. That's a MDB. You have to buy a 24 volt style validator, preferably an MEI, which is MD, uh, MDB. And you have to buy the in one board. And then still, you have a 35 year old snack machine with $1,000 worth of upgrades. It had a brown front. You need to put a tough front kit on it for $100. Uh, if you've never done one, you might spend a good part of your Saturday afternoon putting that front on. They're a little tricky the first couple times. Not hard, but if you've never done one, a little tricky. And then don't forget, you've got to paint this machine. Okay, paint might cost you $25. It still has to be done. So now you have twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 in this old machine, and guess what? It's not ADA compliant. So guys, stay away from these old funky machines you find on Craigslist and OfferUp and the Facebook ads, they're not worth taking for free. Then, last but not least, and this really gets under my skin, is somebody posted a picture of what I consider to be a real workhorse. It was a Dixie Narco 440 stack machine. 440 means it holds 440 cans. We operated a ton of them uh, in our Hotels and motels back in the 80s, they held a lot of product. They were awesome, but single price. It was advertised as a 2010 machine, so they're off by 25 years. They're trying to dupe somebody into buying this machine. 
misrepresenting it. I want to know where did the seller get this information that it was a 10-year-old machine as this video is being brought, uh, recorded in 2020 um, or were they just trying to dupe somebody into thinking they were buying a modern machine? Single price, no credit cards, it's not MDB, it's a great workhorse, it's worth a couple hundred. Um, I strongly recommend if you're going to run single price, I talked about it in my last uh, video, put a good coin mech in it, put a fresh coin mech in it, and put an MEI validator. The coin codes are too old, it won't last. But anyways, guys, when you when you post these, these posts on our Facebook groups and you want to know is it worth it, you know, what is it? There's a lot of information out there, but buy machines that are American-made and buy stuff. Try and stay within the 20-year plan. Don't buy anything pre-2020 or, or pre-1998, as there are some good MDB machines. So, once again, we have a lot of the conversion products available. Um, there's a lot of harnesses. Some of these control boards they had dual plug-ins. They have an MDB plug, but yet they're running on a 110 volt system with a 12 pin uh, coin mech, maybe a 24 volt like the USI's, or maybe a 110 volt like some of the Dixie Narcos and the Vendos and, and so on. So anyways guys, uh, love reading your posts. If you have any comments for us down below, love to hear them. We're always looking for ideas for more videos. This is our tips number two. Uh, right, click that bell. And if you haven't subscribed already, you know what to do. We're a growing channel and uh, we're looking forward to uh, conversing with you. So for now, Doug at Doug's World Tour. Out.